Welcome back. I'm Easton Harris. In this video today, we are going to talk about entries. We're going to talk about making money in the market using support and resistance zones. Okay, so we're going to be going over entries, take profit levels, stop losses, and trade management a bit. We'll, we'll introduce trade management. All right, this is what we're going to be going over today. And to give you guys an idea of what we're going to be looking at within the charts, I'm going to do a quick markup here so you guys can understand exactly what we're going to be looking for, kind of a crash course on how we're going to be dealing with some of these things and what to expect. All right, so regarding support and resistance, this is kind of how we're going to trade it. Now, these are major support and resistances. We're going to bring this one up here as well because it's going to be another major support resistance area. Now, what we're going to be looking for are entries. All right, to give you guys a quick idea what we're going to be looking for today, we are going to be looking at entries as far as a break and retest. Okay, so that's one that we're going to be looking at. So the entry is going to be off on our major support and resistance zone. When price comes back to retest a broken resistance as support. Okay, that'll be one entry. We're going to look at some other entries, such as bounces. And this occurs when there is no break, but when price bounces from these levels. Bouncing from resistance back down to support and then back to resistance. So these are the entry points that we're going to be looking at. We got break and retest, bounces, and then to top it off, I'll go ahead and show y'all just so y'all aren't confused when we get there. The entry to the downside on a break and retest. Okay, so these are the entries that we will be looking at today. Now, as far as stop loss and take profit levels go, I'll go ahead and give you a quick rundown on how this is going to go. If we enter here, when price comes back anywhere in our zone, our take profit, let me move this out of the way, our take profit is going to be the next major support resistance zone. Now, our stop loss is not going right under this zone. That is a huge no go, okay? Now, our stop loss for break and retest need breathing room, okay? Ideally, you wanna place your stop loss past the previous support that price used to break through this resistance, okay? Ideally, that's where your stop would need to go past that with a little bit of extra space. I'm gonna tell you why, okay? I'm gonna tell you why. This is how you mitigate your losses. Now, let me just say a few things before we continue. Your stop loss is meant to protect your account, not to take you out of trades. Let me say that again. Your stop loss is not meant to take you out of trades. It's meant to protect your account, okay? Now here's how this works. Your stop loss is here in place in case something crazy happens in the market, all right? If some, for some reason, price shoots one way or the other against you, your account's not gonna be completely wiped out because you do have a stop loss set, all right? But 90% of the time, your stop loss should not be getting hit. And this is why. What will happen with a stop loss like this, you do this, give it breathing room, and you monitor this trade. And if it breaks back under this major support and resistance and holds on the opposite side, it has to hold on the opposite side, not just break to that side. You need an extra candle or two to close on this side of the zone before you can exit manually. 
And what this is gonna do is really mitigate your losses, okay? So if you do this, everyone who had their stop here got stopped out for 50 pips, but since price pulled back a little bit to retest this zone, you're walking away with like an 18 pip loss. Okay, that is how you mitigate losses. Very, very rarely does your stop loss get hit. Your stop losses should not be taking you out of trades. You've got your stop losses too close. Okay, and I know everyone likes to play it safe and have great risk to reward and great risk to reward is important, but you gotta understand how to mitigate, how to manage and how to come out on top, winners and losers. So this, this is what this trade is gonna look like. All right, let me get rid of these arrows so we can just deal with the price feed. Now that's one, that's one setup we're gonna look at today. Another one is gonna be this entry up here, a bounce, okay? So this one here that we just talked about is a retest. Okay, so price came up, retested, and continued on. Up here, this would be a bounce trade, not a breakout trade. This is more, this is a bounce. So this is when we anticipate that the resistance or support will hold and reverse the market back in the other direction to the next major support or resistance zone, okay? So these trade parameters here, of course, you're gunning for this major support and resistance zone down here. Now on this one, your stop, if you have nothing to the left to go off of, if you don't have a, a zone that's close enough, you need to take a look at the size of these candles and you need to make a judgment call because you're gonna need to be able to handle a candle that has enough momentum behind it to break this zone if it does break this zone, it's going to take some momentum. And it's going to be a good sized candle. So you got to leave some breathing room and watch your trades. Okay. But ideally, you never want to be out on the first breakthrough. You always want to let at least one more candle close on the other side of this zone before exiting. You want price to hold here before you get out. All right. So the best thing to do in this case would be to make the trade a two to one, two to one risk to reward and watch it and mitigate that loss if it comes. Now in this example, of course it does not come. So price flies down, TP smashed. Another one we're gonna look at is a bounce from the opposite side. And just like selling at the resistance, we're gonna buy at this support down here, right here. And just like where this stop loss was at on this trade, it's going to be the same thing. The only thing that's different here is the way that this trade came about. Take profit, again, is going to be our major zone. This first trade was a breakout, retest, and then a continuation. This trade here was a simple bounce and a change in direction, okay? So here price broke through the major support and resistance and continued on. These other two price is bouncing from these support and resistances are winning and changing the direction the market is flowing. Now this last one, again, this is a breakout trade just like the very first one over here, but to the downside this time, price breaks through the major support and resistance retest and continues on down. So your entry is in the, within this zone. And on this one, you can see that our most recent support and resistance zone that price reacted from is way back here. Okay, but here's a little trick that you can do. If you look at this area right here where price fell from earlier, we can draw this as a zone and we can use this one. And we can throw our stop loss behind that one and then monitor it, take it back down to this level here. Okay, so these are the things we're gonna be looking at today. All right, so let's dive into the chart and have a look. Now here's an area you should already be familiar with. This is the area where we looked at 
differentiating major zones and minor zones. Okay, so we have this solid zone through here on both sides, and we're gonna bring this down just like we had it earlier. So we have our major support and resistance zones, both marked in purple, and just so everyone is clear, these are the areas we're looking at. Okay, now how can we make money with support and resistance? Okay, it's very simple. Now, to make money with support and resistance, you first have to have the support and resistance. So it's not until it's not until we get this reaction here that we have a solid resistance. At this point, this reaction here out of this zone is when this resistance is validated, okay? We don't have it drawn up just yet until we get this reaction out of it, okay? At that point, we can go, okay, we have a major support resistance area. Now, similarly, down here, we do not have this support marked as a major support until this area right here. So we have all these interactions on both sides and these, these two interactions on either side really clarify where the zone is. And it gives you that extra confidence that, okay, there is a solid zone here and price is reacting very well off of it. It's respecting it. Now moving forward, we can capitalize on this, okay? So, let me move this out of the way a bit. So price enters the realm in between our major support and resistances. We don't know that yet. Price is just bouncing back and forth, giving us the boundaries for this zone. And once we make it down here and price rejects again for the fourth time off this area, back up, we now have that support validated. Now price is gonna react off this resistance, flow back down, shoot back up, react again, heavily, again, out of this resistance zone. Now, after the fourth time here, we have some validation, we have a very solid zone. And once we get up here in this area, we're gonna sell down. Price gets up to the resistance, we're gonna sell on the candle close. Pro tip, always let the candle close. Now, your take profit, let's do take profit first. Your take profit is going to be the closest part of your major support and resistance zone. We draw these very specifically, guys, and there's a reason for that, okay? Price can react from the forefront of this major support down here. So we want to take profit. As soon as we touch that, we wanna be out before price reacts and flies in the opposite direction. So your take profit is right at the edge, the beginning of that zone, okay? Now, your stop loss, your stop loss is gonna need some breathing room, and we wanna make sure the risk to reward still does make sense as well. So we're gonna leave a little bit of breathing room here. We don't have anything to the left to really go with. So ideally, you wanna make this a two to one if possible, but you can see that's just not gonna happen. So you're gonna to have to leave a bit of breathing room for this trade. You need to use your best judgment, okay? So for this instance, with risk to reward, we can't make it a two to one without having our stop loss too close. The best thing to do is if, if you have no zone to go off of or anything like that, set the trade to a one to one risk to reward and you monitor this. And if it breaks and holds out here, you need to mitigate that loss and exit before it flies this way, okay? For this area in particular, your stop loss 
is a one-to-one -one risk to reward and you're going to monitor this trade. Any break and retest of this zone as support rather than resistance, that's a manual exit, okay? Now your take profit in this area is very simple. Like we said before, your take profit, your take profit is going to be the edge of your zone, the closest edge of your zone. We don't want to risk putting take profit anywhere in this level here. Okay, you can react anywhere on this level, you need to be out as soon as it hits it. Okay, that's this trade. I'm going to clear this up a little bit, make room for the next trade. Our next trade, after we win this one, and price comes down and hits our TP, we are now sitting on a support. Guys, what do we do with support? We buy it. Okay, look at this. It doesn't matter if you bought the red one, the green one, the other red one, the other other red one, this green one, or even this green one, as long as risk to reward makes sense. Any of these candles here are entries, all of them. It doesn't matter where, all you have to do is hit the buy button when price gets here. Now let me clear these arrows off. Price comes down here. We're going to enter in here. Now, we're gonna be aiming for our major resistance above in this area the closest edge of this major support and resistance zone. Okay, that is where your take profit will be placed, just like before. Let me drag this over here so we can just have a look at what's going on. Price shoots up, doesn't make it to our, our major resistance yet, comes back down to our major support. Okay, there's no reason to exit this trade. We're still holding at support in this area. Price then bounces off our support and then returns one final time before hitting take profit at our major resistance. Okay, so our take profit was hit for this one. Now I'm gonna I'm gonna highlight this area here because we I'm gonna put a marker here. So this was a loss. I'm gonna go ahead and make this yellow so it stands out a little better. Now Moving on, we break out of our resistance. Price then comes back down for a retest right here, testing our zone as support now. So, just like we talked about at the very beginning of the video, we have a break retest. Now we're aiming for a continuation. See, continuation here. Now again, you can buy this red one, this red one, this red one. Now I will tell you, you cannot buy the big green one that got rejected back down. You can't buy that one, but any three of these other candles will work, okay? And wherever you buy, your exit is gonna be the same. So again, let's remove these arrows and let's enter the market. Okay, here's our entry. Move this out of the way a bit. Now, I don't have a zone. I don't have a zone marked over here. Okay, I, don't, I see nothing. And I'm gonna do this to show you guys that this is okay. Sometimes you're gonna miss major zones. And I'm sure I can find one if I really tried, but I wanna show you guys how you would handle this and manage this trade without having a set TP here. Okay, let's say you do have a set TP and it's just in outer space, okay? There's something up there that you like and you're just gunning for outer space because that's how this is gonna go. Now, move this out of the way, back out of the way actually. Now, price has already fell from this area once, okay? We bought right here, price soars up as a big huge candle but then rejects all the way back down. Again, huge rejection. Now we still got a good sized candle body on it, but huge rejection back down. Okay, this is price telling you that, hey, something is in this area 
that it does not like. Okay, but that's okay. That's okay. There's no reason to exit yet. Price comes back down. We're still holding above our support and resistance zone. And price is going to come up again. But this time, price is going to reject and close a bit lower. But it is going to show us again that there is something here in the way. So while we're in this trade, price rejects here, here, and here. Price is saying, I'm not making it past this zone. I'm struggling here. Even though you don't have a zone marked, price is giving it to you. It's creating it in front of you. And you have to pay attention to these kind of things. It's going to save you so much. If you just pay attention to what price is doing, it'll tell you what it wants to do. Now, you're not going to get as many pips as you would have liked out of this trade. Okay, because your exit, your exit for this trade is the close of this exhaustion candle here. That is your exit. So we didn't get the 360 pips we were looking for, whatever you were aiming, you might have been aiming for there. But we do walk away with pips and we don't lose. But most importantly, we don't lose because we're smart enough to pay attention to what price is giving us. So this is a manual close, guys, right here. We have a manual close. And we'll go ahead and point this out for you guys. I changed my color back, okay. All right, manual close. Now, we're coming back. Notice this zone is very well respected though. It's highly respected. Now, we're coming back. We're breaking through. We come all the way back down to our support. For me personally, this is uh, my personal opinion, uh, there's no entry here. There's no entry because you have this breakthrough here. I need another candlestick to close on this side and the candle that does close on this side flies down. I don't wanna enter here uh, about a quarter of the way through of the zone that's adding extra risk to the table so for instance let's get rid of this so we can just kind of take a look here if price would have broken through here and then came back for a retest right here i'd have sold it down to this area but you can see that price does not pull back at all it just keeps on going so if you're going to enter this trade Right, you would a you would have to put a substantial amount of risk on the table because you have to you have to leave breathing room and then the t the stop loss to take profit makes zero sense. Okay, this is a trade that you cannot take. All right, there was no pullback. Now, moving forward, price flies down to our support that we already have marked in here. And what are we gonna do? You buy at support. We're gonna enter this trade. It doesn't matter if you got in on one of these two red ones, the green one next to it, this red one, this green one. You could even gun for these green ones here, not the big one though, okay? Price comes down here and you hit the buy button, okay? Now you take profit, you have a set take profit here. We know where this is, we have this zone marked up already. It's been marked up for a while now. Take profit, the edge of that zone. Stop loss. Got to leave some breathing room. Got to leave some breathing room. And uh, if all else fails, you can make it. You can come up with your own risk to reward ratio. Uh, ideally, ideally, guys, you want at least a two to one for the most part, okay? So if it was a two to one here, it would be about in this area. Uh, this is what you would want. In some circumstances, you can do a one to one. I'll personally do it sometimes, that's fine. It's my account, I do what I want with my account and I've been doing this for a while so I know what I'm doing. I can consistently do this and not even worry about it. But a good rule of thumb is just do a two to one risk to reward if you don't have a an area down here to go off of, 
and that gives you that gives you breathing room. Ideally, you might want a little bit more breathing room than that, but monitor it, manage it how you know how to manage it. If price comes down here, breaks through, and then test this area again as resistance, that's a manual close. Manual close. How easy is this stuff, guys? Look, I mean, this was just this was just money. We come back up to our resistance. You got three four-hour candles to enter this trade. Three of them. You had 12 hours to hit the sell button. What do we do at resistances, guys? We sell. So you sell to close of one of these candles. Stop or take profit is the edge of this zone. And then your stop loss, your stop loss is gonna have to come out to about a, a one to one and a half just to give it that breathing room. It's gotta have that breathing room, okay? But price is gonna smack TP, and what do you know? Now this is, this is interesting here. Price comes down to our support, and we actually do not get an entry here, okay? So check this out. Now look, price is coming down with some uh, a decent amount of strength here, and this red candle, you can see, it looks like it's gonna go ahead and come down and touch it, and uh, it does, but within the same candle, when the candle closes, it's already up here. It's already up there. That takes a lot of possible profits off the table for us, and that really hurts our risk to reward. Okay, because now we're gunning for 82 pips, and you're going to have to risk like 137. This makes no sense. You can't take this trade. You should never take anything worse than a one-to-one. -one. And that's that's rare. Okay, so no trade set up here. But price is going to continue and come back up to our resistance. And I'm going to clone this. I'm going to keep track of these. We have a loss here. Now, moving on. Moving on, I need to extend my zone here. I need to make sure I have it, I keep it lined up uh, as best I can to how I originally had it. Okay, looking at this wick right here. Got that, sweet. Okay, so in case you guys forgot, because we're getting, we're leaving behind our labels here. This is our major SNR, and we're gonna clone that bad boy. Also, I'll throw this down here just so everyone's on the same page. Okay, let me go ahead and make sure I keep these lined up. We pulled across. So, okay, make sure that's back there with that wig. Okay, perfect. Okay, so let's come in here and let's look at this area. Now, as price is coming through, and we take this loss right in here. Price breaks through, solid candle breakthrough, but we don't get a retest on this zone. Price continues to go on, and when it's come, when it comes back, it doesn't come far enough back for us to be able to enter off this major support and resistance zone. Okay, so we're gonna follow price. These, all these areas in here that price is fluctuating on is minor. All these minor zones within here. Now price is finally going to flow back down. Again, all these minor zones. And we're finally going to get back to our major support and resistance zone right here. In this area, let me bring these over. This area here, there's only two candles you can enter on. This red one and the red one that wicked through a little bit. Those are the only two options we've got here for an entry on this trade. Uh, this huge green one, this giant Marubozu, we don't want to enter after the move, no. All right, but we're down here at our support, so what are we gonna do, guys? We're gonna buy it, doesn't matter where, one of these two, one of these two is your buy entry. Now, where are we gonna take this trade, okay? 
Where are we going to take it? I look left and I have a support resistance zone up here, but I don't have a ton of interactions off of it. I don't. There's not, it's not built up. There's not a lot of proof that there is indeed a major support and resistance zone here. So what I'm gonna do in this case, in this case, we're gonna look for the most solid zone we can find. And it may be a minor zone, that's okay. We need a solid zone that we can rely on. Maybe we expect price to get back up here and let us know that th this indeed is a major SNR zone. So let's say we're gunning for these highs, feeling very optimistic, and uh, we're gonna gun for the far edge of it too. So we're gonna use this high as TP, and I'm gonna do this to kind of show y'all another management tactic, okay? So our stop loss, if we're gunning for that, our stop loss could be all the way all the way down here, it's still fine because our TP is so big. The risk to reward is over three to one. So we got our stop loss. We definitely got the breathing room we need to mitigate a loss if it occurs. Now, how are we going to handle this one? If you look, you can see all these fluctuations within the market. All these minor zones are at play here. Okay. All these minor zones are at play. Now, one way you can manage this trade, if you look over here, there's not a whole lot of reactions up here to go off of, okay? There's one up here, maybe two, but we don't have a third one to confirm that. So we've got one interaction up here. Now, if you come through and you look at this area here, well, you can see we have a reaction here, here, and here. So if we take these points, they don't look horrible. They don't look, they don't look major, but they don't look horrible. Okay. If we use these points to draw a support and resistance zone, a minor support and resistance zone, like so, and I'll change the color on this so we know that this is not a major one, and we'll make it we'll make it yellow. So we've identified this minor zone, and this is one of the much better looking minor zones by the way um, this is relatively solid and you can see that when price does get back up here it does react off of it yet again and respects it from both sides so this zone is being respected and it doesn't look bad so you can use this to manage this trade okay and here's how you're going to do it there's a couple different ways you can do it but i'm going to show you the easiest way first Okay, so the easiest way to do this would be to draw this zone. You already, you already know price is respecting it well enough. And then when price breaks, and it's a big candle breakthrough too, big candle breakthrough and it holds. When it holds, this is what I'm talking about when I want to see a break and a hold when you exit for a loss on the support or resistance zone that you entered on. Now we didn't enter on this one, we're already in massive profit, but this is a great way to manage this trade. So when price breaks through this support and resistance zone and holds and respects it as resistance, we don't want resistance, we want support, we wanna keep going up, we're in a buy. So when this occurs, this is a manual close. This is one way to handle it. Manually close right within this area, okay? So I'm gonna go ahead and label this for you guys. This here, this area is a manual close. And you walked away with 225 pips, not bad. You can't be mad. Now another way you can handle this, okay? If you want to stay in this trade, this is your trade account, you can do what you want to do. I'm not completely opposed to it. I don't do it myself, but I have nothing against you if you want to stay in this trade and try to ride it out, okay? Now, what you can do to do this, the safest way to do this, is we're going to pretend that this dotted line is my stop loss, OK? 
okay, this dotted line is my stop loss, and my stop loss is down here. Now, when price breaks through this zone, it's relatively solid compared to what's around it. When it breaks through and respects it as resistance, you can pull your stop up into profit, and you can look for you can look for another minor zone, maybe like this one through here. It's it gets messy, but there is a minor zone through here, and you can choose to leave your stop loss on the edge of that and let it ride. If it gets if it gets hit, you get taken out with profits. Either way, you walk away with profits. Now, me personally, I prefer to exit when this occurs. That's just me. I've learned that it saves me a lot of pips when I do this. So the whole idea is to really win on your winners, your winning trades, and not really lose too much on your losing trades. Now, this isn't a losing trade, but I would treat it the same manual exit right here, okay? But you can do whatever you want. I honestly just recommend you manually exiting. If you didn't manually exit, you lost 100 extra pips. But that option is there if you wanna do that. Some people prefer to do that. Nothing wrong with it, I just don't do it myself. All right, let's continue on. Right now, price is continuing to flow down. We're back at our major support and resistance zone, okay? So yes, we're gonna buy and we're gonna lose. And I'm gonna keep track of this. That is a loss. Okay, now major resistance again. We're coming up on it. And I need to make sure I'm drawing this correctly. I've got it a little too big here. Okay, boom. All right, make sure I'm drawing that correctly. And uh, we do not have a zone after okay so before we continue oh here we go we'll just go ahead and mark up um another major zone before this is our last major zone right here so we're going to need another one if we want to move any further and i do want to move a bit further with you guys uh so real quick what i'm going to do is i'm going to mark my zone with lines just because i'm not going to be able to drag it all the way over there immediately so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna look for these reaction points, and this is what I'm looking for. I see these reactions here are gonna be the furthest part of my zone to the downside. Now the, the largest part of my zone is gonna be this, this wick right here. Okay, so I'm gonna take my zone, and I'm gonna draw it, I'm gonna see how it looks really quick, see if I like this, see if it can be better. It's fair, but I don't, I don't like my zones this big. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna fine tune it a little bit because I feel, I feel as if there's, there's a couple, there's two different zones in that area that I just had marked. So I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use this. Instead of using this wick, I'm gonna use this one. And I like this better, this is, this is very clear, and this looks very solid. We all we have great reaction points on here. Now I can't draw uh, drag this straight across right away. Let me change the color on this first because this is major. This is a major zone. It's very well respected. Has great reactions. So we're gonna use this. I'm gonna take my line tool because my line tool extends all the way across infinitely, and I'm just gonna mark the edges of my zone here. And we'll see what happens when we get there. So let's go back to where we were at. Okay, here we are. Take that loss. We get back to our major support. And we are going to take a loss here. I'm going to keep track of these. Now, what we are going to get, though, is our major support and resistance zone is going to break. It's going to break, and it's going to retest beautifully. Okay, so we get our, our entry candle here, this red one with the wick. That's our entry candle. So we're gonna enter on here, the close of that. Now, our zone is, is down here. I'm gonna go ahead and drag this across, follow my lines that I've got marked up. And we're gonna get this zone drawn across like so. Okay. All right, 
So our next major support and resistance zone is gonna be the one down here. I'll go ahead and label this for you guys. This is again another major SNR zone. And I'm just gonna I'm gonna set this on top of it because it is a little smaller. Okay. So stop loss on this. We do have a little area right here. As long as as long as uh, risk to reward makes sense, we have this very minor zone through here, right through there. Now we're gonna look and check that and see if the risk to reward is okay. And we're gunning for the major support and resistance area. So if we do leave it up here with a little bit of breathing room, it's okay. It's not ideal, but it's okay. You gotta remember guys, your stop losses shouldn't be getting hit anyways. Okay, it's for account protection only. Remember, if price were to come up, break, and hold, that'd be a manual exit and you would only lose 70 pips. So not bad. Remember that guys, your stop losses should not be getting hit regularly. Okay, it should be very rare. All right, but we make it down here. I might have to extend this zone cross. Okay. Make sure, let me make sure that I'm I'm keeping it steady here. I want to make sure my zone is correct the entire time. And we are gonna have to pull this one across. Now just bear with me. I know it looks a little bit clustered right now, but I want these areas okay. Now so TP smash, we are now at a major support. So what are we going to do? We're going to buy it. And again, it doesn't matter where you bought it, really. This red one, this green one, this green one, even the green one after. Uh, this red one, if you missed out on the green one, you could. Not a big deal. You had entries here. You just had to hit the buy button, guys. It's that simple. So we're gonna enter in down here. Now, as bad as I wanna hold it to this next support and resistance zone, um, there, is, there is an area off in here. It's a little messy, because it is more of a minor area. But there is an area through here that price is respecting and we do have this solid interaction off of it. We have a couple of solid interactions off of it. So I would take note of that area and I would TP that. In all honesty, I can sit here and tell you that I'd go for the major support and resistance zone, but it's just not true. I would TP that. Stop loss. Do I have anything over here? This area. There's a little support area right here. Stop loss goes right beyond that. Okay, perfect. What I'm looking at here, I just scrolled left and I looked for the very next zone, support zone, which was this one. It's a minor one, but that's what I'm gonna use for my stop loss. Okay, so we'll do that, that looks good. And TP was smashed. Now, since, since we are here and I have made note of this zone here, this will start to cloud up the chart here and make it a little tougher to trade. So all through this area, I don't wanna take any sales from this area. So I'm not selling any of this. I just wanted to take profit here. Once price got up here, because this zone is right here, I don't wanna sell any of this. I don't wanna sell any of this. So what this becomes, this becomes a no trade zone. After TP is hit, there's no trades to take. These zones are too close together, okay? They're too close together. And at this point, we're just gonna wait. We're gonna wait for the major support and resistances to start taking back over. I mean, just look guys, there's no solid setups through here. There's no solid setups through here because by the time that this candlestick breaks through and then it comes back, or it holds on this side of it, it's already at the next major support and resistance zone. Um, at that point, you don't really wanna sell it either 
because you got to give this this area its respect and this this just becomes a no trade zone okay we don't want to trade this area these these two support resistance zones even though one is major one is minor um, they're too close to each other and it it's, it doesn't set you up it doesn't set you up because if price closes anywhere in between here you're going to be gunning for like five pips and if price closes down here well your stop loss has to go on the other side of this major support and resistance zone so then you have unnecessary risk on the table and let me break this down for you guys you can't enter anywhere up here because you have to you do have to respect this minor zone that is getting pretty solid interaction you have to give it its its credit here you can't enter a cell above right above this support okay and when it does break you cannot enter a cell because of the amount of risk you're going to have to put on the table for this your stop loss is going to have to go way up here way up here because you got to give breathing room past this wick okay that is way way more risk on the table and what that's going to look like if you did wait for this to break and hold down here somewhere you're looking at something like this for this it's almost a one to one but it it just doesn't make much sense you know to put this much risk on the table and honestly it's probably a little more you know this was just throwing it back a little bit but honestly yeah you're gonna have you're gonna have to go a little further back and that's just unnecessary we don't want to take trades like that that's a this is a no-go area no trades now moving forward here we do break above this major support and resistance now we can trade i like this area this area is better i can feel this i like trading in between my major support and resistance zones so price is going to break through and again strong bullish candle breakthrough that's what we like to see you could enter here you can enter here here you can wait for it to come back a little bit you can enter here anywhere in here you could you could enter off this this green one right here they reject it back up but at that point you're already almost halfway through the zone so ideally as close to the zone as possible the better so you enter take profits this area right here it's going to get smashed and and we do have a zone to watch with this minor zone but we're back in here in between the major ones and they're looking smooth stop loss is going to go past this this push where the support was maybe with a little bit breathing room we're going to watch it oh that's a nine that's not even a one-to-one -one. nope not taking it you don't take those if it's not at least the very least a one-to-one -one, we do not take it now price does go to the next support and resistance zone and then boom this occurs where is my is that call out okay this is where it gets fun this is where it gets fun because you're going to take a loss here we'll talk about this later you're going to take a loss here but then you're going to catch on really fast okay so you're going to take a couple of losses and then you're going to start working with what the market gives you you cannot update these major support and resistance zones without a major update price has to give you a major update and a lot of times they will happen relatively close to the one you already have which is why we're going to update this major support and resistance zone okay so this area i'm noticing that we are we're breaking past and we're holding we're holding we're starting to disrespect this zone right here which is odd because this is my major SNR. We're starting to disrespect this and completely disrespect it in this area. Disrespect it in this area. Take that loss. And it's at this point where we start to catch on. Okay, we start to catch on. 
and you start to see that there's something else at play here. This is being more respected than the previous one. Right now, you have to look at what price is respecting. If the price isn't respecting your major SNR anymore, you need to move on and see what it is respecting and adjust your major support and resistances. Okay. Now we take some losses here, and uh, I'm going to ghost this out just so I remember exactly where we were at here for just a second. Hold on, guys. I ghost this out. We were, oh, we were up here. Okay, I just wanna, I'm gonna keep track of where this zone was right here. Now we've updated it uh, at this point. We're gonna have a loss here off this area. It's not until we have this loss that we now have this new zone. All right, now we're gonna pull this across as best we can bear with me i know it looks a little messy i'm just trying to oh look we're going to end up down here i'm just trying to line up everything as best i can here as we keep moving forward now looking at this area i'm going to move this out of the way now after this loss we're going to adjust our major support and resistance up here and also, you can tell that price already has solid interactions down here. Okay, price is coming up, smacking our support and resistance, doing it again. That's where we took the loss, falling back down to a newfound support, coming back up to our major resistance. Now, at this point, at this point, I'm moving this up here. Okay, there's there is solid interactions off this level at this point. And there there there's solid moves too. You have to catch on to this. Price is starting to consolidate. Okay. Now I wouldn't have this marked up until this solid push here back into this major resistance. Now, once we have this major resistance and we're back in it, we can then enter for a sell. So that's what we do. We sell at the resistance. Okay. Aiming for the support. Boom. Very solid. Stop loss, just giving it some breathing room. A two to a, a two to one risk to reward. Looks pretty solid here. I like that ratio. And it also does give a solid amount of breathing room. And I'll go double check and see there is an area right here that I can use as a as a kind of a guide for my stop loss right in there. So that's where my stop loss is gonna go. I'm gonna delete these now. We sell, we make money, we come back down to our major support. What are you gonna do? You are going to buy it. You're gonna buy it. Now, check this out. I'm gonna move this over to separate this a little bit. Uh, we are, well, there's entry opportunities everywhere. You can even enter after that one if you want to. Now, what's interesting is price isn't gonna even make it to the take profit yet. Price flies back down. Look, we, we're down here at our support. Now price flies up and comes flying back down. Okay, giving us the perfect entry point after the exhaustion. Beautiful. We're gonna be gunning for this area up here. Stop loss past this with a little bit of breathing room. It's better than a one to one. It's better than a one, 1.5. It's really solid. I like this trade. We're at our major support. We're buying up to the resistance. TP smashed. Look how easy this is, guys. We've literally just been bouncing back and forth, back and forth, over and over throughout all of this. And this is only using support and resistance. Okay, this stuff is very simple. You just have to practice marking up your zones, 
and using a bit of judgment when it comes to stop loss. Uh, like I said, you don't want to take anything that's worse than a one-to-one. -one. Ideally, you don't even want to take that. Ideally, you'd want to take a two-to-one risk to reward. Okay, now we're, we're fixing to top off this video, but just in case you forgot, we're back up here at our major support resistance zone. Okay, it's acting as resistance. It doesn't matter if you enter after this rejection. It doesn't matter if you entered any of these candles here, okay? But we're gonna say you entered on the rejection, because you should have. And again, we're gonna TP the very beginning of our major support. Also, stop loss is kicked back. And what does price do? Straight to TP. Like I've shown you throughout, there are some losses. Nothing works 100% of the time. Now, support and resistance, if done correctly, can be phenomenal. It can work really well as long as you are taking the time to make sure they are drawn correctly, accurately, and in turn, that will make you consistently profitable when using support and resistance zones. All right, guys. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope this helps you out with your entries, your stop losses, and managing some of these trades.